How's your energy, Southern Arizona? Good morning to you. I'm Paul Cicala. Another big venue for mixed martial arts will go down tomorrow night, October 13th, at the Casino del Sol, and it'll be a homecoming for a former world championship fighter that we affectionately call El Toro, a.k.a. Anthony Burchek. Anthony Burchek! I made my, my professional debut in 2009 at Ava Amphitheater. And now the former Sawadito wrestling standout, Anthony Burchek, is on the main event this weekend at the Combate Americas Bouts at the Casino del Sol. It's been such a long time since I've been at home in front of my friends, fans, and family. So the pressure's on for a fighter that spanned the globe for MMA bouts, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu in places like Brazil, Japan, Las Vegas, and beyond in a pro career that started almost a decade ago. I won the Rage in the Cage um, world title. Uh, and then I graduated up and moved back into uh, uh, the more prestigious uh, world championship fights for the MFC and Maximum Fighting Championships in Canada. And I was the inaugural Bantamweight champion um, for Maximum Fighting Championships. Um, and winning that world title is what actually got me my, my big shot at the UFC. And the list of accomplishments go on and on for Anthony Burchek. A number of belts, a number of rings, even the gym getting the best of 2017 here in Tucson. But uh, I can't list them all in one report. So if you want to see all these accomplishments, all these belts, all you have to do is go to KVOA.com. We have much, much more. Also, we have our complete interview with Anthony Burchek, El Toro from Sahuarita, representing Tucson. And of course, all of these championships. And come Saturday in a card being labeled Combate Americas, Mexico versus USA. Burchek will be carrying the flag of both the red, white, and blue and the tricolor of Mexico. Stirring a lot of emotions in me that makes me feel very proud about my culture and her heritage of being a Mexican-American. It's, it's something really hard to put into words, but the one word that I have is, is just pride. It's pride of the old Pueblo. Old Pueblo pride at the Pascuayaki Pueblo, the Casino del Sol, fight night this Saturday. Anthony Burchak! Hey, don't forget the Combate Americas Mixed Martial Arts weigh-in is free and open to the public. It all goes down later this afternoon and early evening at around 5.30 p.m. And one of the co-main events includes the return to MMA of a boxing legend on the women's end. Sixth Division World Boxing Champ Amanda The Real Deal Serrano will square off against former Mexican National Kickboxing Champ Erendina Aquetzcali Ordonez. I'm Paul Cicala for News 4 Tucson Sports. Happy Friday to you. All right, so I'm Anthony Burchak. I'm born and bred, born and bred right here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I went to Saudita High School. Um, I've wrestled in college, uh, and, and that's how I got into mixed martial arts. Shortly after that, uh, I won the Rage in the Cage um, world title, uh, and then I graduated up and moved back into uh, uh, the more prestigious uh, world championship fights for the MFC and Maximum Fighting Championships in Canada, and I was the inaugural Bantamweight champion um, for Maximum Fighting Championships. Um, and winning that world title is what actually got me my, my big shot at the UFC. Um, I only went two and two in the UFC, two wins, two losses, but uh, I knocked out former world champion Joe Soto uh, in under two minutes. Um, and then the, the world champion at that time, TJ Dillashaw, took him five rounds to do that. So that's kind of the thing that I said was uh, it took me one round, took him five. Um, the last three fights I've been fighting in Japan and it's been, you know, uh, a surreal experience and a real culture shock going from, you know, countries that are very Latin based with either, you know, uh, Spanish or French, Portuguese dialects to going somewhere in Asia where you really can't even have an, any idea of how to communicate with, you know, your fellow man. But um, I'm back at home now. Uh, this year's probably been one of the most fruitful years for me. Um, I've won two super fights at Rise of the Prospects, which is a local jiu-jitsu organization here in town. This is the, the Brown Belt Lightweight Championship. Um, I also won uh, the 2018 U.S. Men's Wrestling National Championship in Las Vegas this year. Um, and I'm looking to have a, a good homecoming at Casino del Sol. Uh, the Pascuayaki tribe has always done a great job putting on fights, and, and this fight is uh, Combate Americas, which really, really focuses on the, the Latin American fighters, their heritage, and, and our culture. 
you, that's awesome. Well, what you said, I, can, I, I don't even have to ask you questions, but I will I'll continue. <laughs> like the UFC ring you had, is that a championship? That, I mean, like, what was that? For? Did you, by knocking him out in that one round, did you get a UFC belt? No, no, no. That was, the, the ring that I got was for the maximum fighting championships. That would be like a, like a triple A league for baseball, right? So uh, the MLB would be the UFC, and then any of the farm leagues would have been uh, maximum fighting championships. Um, it would be kind of annoying and, and gaudy to walk around with a belt like this 24-7. So, um, you know, I did something classy with one of my sponsors, and, and they ended up giving me a championship ring uh, to commemorate, you know, my achievement. Um, unfortunately, when I, when I left to UFC Sacramento, uh, I came back to my house being cleared out. They stole my TVs. They stole my kids' Barbie dolls. They stole ramen packets that I had in the, in the cupboard. Um, and then obviously they stole all the jewelry, my, my championship ring, uh, a necklace that I got, um, all my girls' jewelries and rings and stuff like that. Um, describe, describe what it means for you after fighting in Japan, fighting in Vegas, fighting you know, overseas, Brazil, the whole nine yards, getting it back to your roots. And this is the first time you're fighting in Tucson, I believe, in like eight years or something, right? Yeah, this is eight years coming up. I made my, my professional debut in 2009 at Ava Amphitheater uh, against uh, Gio Arvisu. And, um, you know, fast forward, like you said, I fought Canada, I've been their world champion, uh, Brazil, uh, Japan, all over the US, um, Vermont, uh, New Orleans, Sacramento, Las Vegas, Phoenix. You know, but, but it's been such a long time since I've been at home in front of my friends, fans, and family. Um, you know, the, the pressure's kind of on, right? It's like, uh, when I go away somewhere, there's really no expectations. But when I come home, everybody knows I'm El Toro. I come forward, I fight, I'm here to swing leather. And, and you know, it, it's just kind of like a, another full circle thing where I've done my world tour and now I'm back at home. Do you feel like you might be rusty in any way since you've been concentrating on jiu-jitsu and wrestling tournaments and it's been a while since you throwing books and stuff in the ring? No, you know, I got, I got asked that question about ring rust. I don't really believe in it, but I've been staying so active with, with you know, USA Wrestling and Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I've been competing in some of the biggest invitationals in Jiu-Jitsu. I took second place at the On It Invitational recently in Austin, Texas, um, which is a huge submission-only tournament. Um, I, I've had to stay in shape for those, you know what I mean? I've had to keep up my cardio and endurance. Uh, Professional fighting is, is three five-minute rounds, and in jiu-jitsu, it's one 10-minute round with, uh, it could be, you know, a couple overtimes going in 10, 15 minutes straight. So um, the one-minute rest in between the five-minute rounds definitely is a, is a help. Going straight 10 minutes and then three, four overtimes uh, could really, really sap your energy. So I've really been focused on, on that, that muscle endurance and really keeping my cardio nice and high. Uh, I just brought in my striking coaches for the last four weeks, um, and it's like we, we haven't missed a beat, man. We jumped on, we got on the same page, and uh, I feel really, really good with my boxing, kickboxing, and Muay Thai. Is this going to be live or is it pre-taped? I know it's like when it gets the owner, it's going to be the owner or something, right? Uh, there's three fights on the main card, or four fights on the main card, and Univision is going to be, we're on a strict time schedule, so this will be live. It is. Do you know if yours is going to fall into that? Yeah, mine will be the co-main event. Um, so for sure it'll be live on Univision sure and Univision Deportes. Man, that's great. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, anything else to add that maybe I didn't ask you? You know what, man? I I'm trying to build something here in our community, 10th Planet, uh, Tucson Jiu-Jitsu and Toro Tech Mixed Martial Arts. I try to give back to the youth. I know everybody can't pay a membership, and, and it's really hard on, on some parents to keep their kids active and out of trouble. I, I really am a big proponent of trying to trying to develop the youth and really foster the growth of the next big names out of Tucson, Arizona. Um, if you guys need a place to train, man, come see me. We're at 4765 East Speedway Boulevard, right smack dab in the, cen uh, in the center of Tucson. Um, and like I said, I want to be a beacon for our community. So if you guys need help or any outreach programs, please don't hesitate to, to contact me. And then actually one other question, um, you're talking about your endurance. How much does it help to have the Santa Catalina Mountains in your own backyard, and I know that I've of course run into you training with yeah. everything in the Sabino Canyon, Bear Canyon. I mean, describe what it means for you to get that cardio in a Sonoran desert like that. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. This is a really big shock to people when they come down. He's coming from Denver, which is a high elevation training. I've been doing my sprints on Mount Lemmon at nine, uh, I think it's nine point two thousand feet at the very top where the observatory is. 
Um, it's, it's a huge, huge tool and asset to have that, you know, not, not more than an hour away from me. So um, I really use all the benefits of, of sprinting up Mount Lemmon. Um, and uh, you guys will definitely see the, the gas tank and endurance that I possess October 13th. That's, That's like our version right there of uh, the Big Bear. That's it. Oh, this is awesome.